Happy Monday, students. Hope you're doing well today. We are going to continue lesson 9.1, talking about transformations of functions uh, with the specific focus of something called even and odd functions. A function can either be even, it can be odd, or it can be neither. So I'm going to talk to you how you can determine that and how that relates to this idea of transformations. But first, I have a warm-up for you. Okay, So uh, I'd like you to pause the video here. And I'd like you to try and answer this question before you go on. Okay, pause it. Okay, now that you've had a chance to look at it, um, the red curve is the original function. How has that function changed to get the blue curve? In this case, you note that it's been a reflection over the x-axis, which we learned on Friday that when you reflect over the x-axis, it's multiplying the outside of the function by negative 1, so your answer is a, negative f of x, okay? Changes the output. The output is the opposite from what it was originally, given the same input x, so just pick negative 1, right? When you put negative 1 in, originally you got 1 point, 1.2 or something like that. <clears throat> When you put negative 1 in the next one, you get the opposite of that. You get negative 1.2. So the same input just gives you the opposite output. Okay? Here's another one. Again, pause the video. See if you can figure it out before we move on. Okay, hopefully you paused it and tried it for yourself. Uh, again, the red function is the original curve. Um, <clears throat> in this case, there's two things going on. Um, you might notice that the first thing, uh, the red reflected over the y-axis to get the form of the blue. And so that's changing the input. So negative x is the input, and then it shifted up to, that's outside of the function. So your answer is b, right? Hope that was helpful to look at. So we're going to look at even and odd functions today. So the first thing that I want you to do, so I'm going to try and hold some things up today. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, uh, but we'll try it. It's going to be faster than me trying to write them all out, okay? So I want you to first look at this odd. So I've given you four different functions there that are all examples of odd functions, okay? And I want you to try and look for the pattern. Same with even. There's four examples of functions that are all even. And finally, four examples that are neither. Okay. So hopefully you thought a little bit and came up with maybe some ideas of what makes odd versus even versus neither. Okay. And it, it has to do with symmetry. I alluded to symmetry uh, on Friday, although I said mostly I was going to save that for today. So, here's the first thing you need to know, okay, uh, for odd functions. Okay, so here's your odd ones, okay. They are symmetric about the origin. So that means if you were to kind of put your finger and hold down the function, it has to go through the origin. Notice all these go through the origin and you were to hold the function down at that spot, and then you were to spin the function around that origin point, if you were to spin it exactly 180 degrees and stop, it would look exactly like how it started. Okay, so notice that that would be for any one of these. You spin them 180 degrees and stop, they would look exactly like how they started. Okay, so we call that symmetry about the origin. It's also can be thought of as 180 degrees rotation around the origin and puts it back on itself. And one other way you can think about it is, is it's, it's also two reflections over the x and y axes. I don't know if you remember, but back in geometry, when we studied reflections, we said if you have two intersecting lines and you do two reflections over those lines, it's the same as doing a single rotation. Maybe you remember that. And the relationship, it was actually the angle of the intersecting lines. If you double that angle, that tells you how far the rotation is. So in this case, our vertical, our axes, they're perpendicular, they're 90 degree angles. 
So double the 90 degrees, there's your 180 degree rotation. So just a little connection to geometry there. And finally, um, right down here, this is that notation that we started doing on Friday. So notice, you can see a negative inside with the x. So f of negative x, that was the reflection over the, um, over the y axis. And then the negative outside the fx, that was your reflection over the x-axis. So putting them both together, if, if both of those things hold true, then it's going to be odd. And I'm going to show you how that plays out here in a second. Uh, evens. Uh, hopefully you notice there that the even functions were symmetric about the y-axis. Uh, that was the line of symmetry. If you reflect it over the y-axis, it lands exactly on itself. All right. Um, and then, based on what we learned Friday, that's just saying that the original function is going to equal, if we change the input to negative x, it's still going to be the same function. Okay, so I'm going to show you how that works here in a second as well. And then with the neither, notice basically any function that doesn't fall into one of the first two categories just automatically becomes a neither. There's no symmetry there. Um, yeah. Actually, I shouldn't say there's no symmetry. You could have symmetry about the x-axis, but that doesn't matter. It's only about the y-axis for evens, okay? All right, let's do some examples here. So first one, uh, you're going to be asked to determine if functions are even, odd, or neither. So here's your first question. Is f of x equals x to the fifth minus 4x even, odd, or neither? You could obviously graph this and then just look at the symmetry. That is one way of doing it. But you're also going to have to demonstrate the algebraic way. All right. So here's here's what you're going to do. Step one. All of these will follow the same steps. Step one. You substitute in negative x for x. Okay. That's how you're always going to start. So that means that f of negative x. So here's x. I do some parentheses and put in negative x for the x there. And then here's another x. I got to put in a parentheses and a negative x there. Okay. And then you simplify it. Well, again, negative x to the fifth power. That's an odd number of times you're multiplying this together. So your result is going to be a negative because negative times a negative odd number of times is going to result in negative. Okay. If that doesn't make sense, you need to email me and, and ask me about it, because I'm assuming that makes sense to you, um, but let me know if it doesn't. Negative 4 times negative x is, is positive 4x, okay? And so here, you ask yourself, is, is, f, is f of x, is your original function equal to f of negative x. Okay, and right here, if you took notes from what I just showed you, that's the same thing right there as saying a function is even. So is it even? That's what we're asking about. By saying this, we're saying, is it even? Is f of x equal f of negative x? And so is this function right here, which we calculated, f of negative x, is that right there the same as what we started with up there? No, because we see this is, was a positive, now it's a negative. This was a negative, now it's positive. No, this is not an even function, okay? Because otherwise those two would have to be equal. These two would have to be equal, okay? So we keep going. Step two, we're going to multiply negative 1 by f of negative x. Same thing every time, okay? So we're going to take our f of negative x and we're going to multiply by negative 1. So negative 1 times everything that we got here, which was negative x to the fifth plus 4x. And then again, we're going to simplify. So in this case, we're going to distribute through. So we get x to the fifth minus 4x 
And so that is negative f of negative x, okay? And so we ask the question, is f of x equal to negative f of negative x? Okay, and so that right there is really saying, is it odd? Okay, and so right here, is this the same as our original function? x to the fifth minus 4x. Well, look, those are exactly the same. Yes. So this is an odd function. Okay. We don't have to check anything else. Those are the two things we check. It can only be one. It, it can't be more than one thing at a time. It's either odd, it's either even, or it's neither. This one is odd. One more. Hang with me here is f of x equals 3x squared plus x even odd or neither so in this case <coughs> uh, we're going to do the same step hopefully you don't hear my kids in the background sorry if you do step one um, you are taking and you're subbing in Sub in negative x for x. So f of negative x. Negative x there. Negative x there. So in this case, negative x squared would give you, well, you're taking this negative times a negative an even number of times, so it makes it positive. So it's just 3x squared. And then here, minus x. So is... Let's see. So the question is f of x equal to f of negative x. So again, remember, that's just our is it even question. So is this one equal to what we started with? Well, not quite. The first term is the same, but the second term is not. No. Okay. And then step two. Um, multiply f of negative x by negative 1. So I'm going to take negative 1 times f of negative x. So negative 1 times the 3x squared minus x. I distribute that through negative 3x squared plus x. And I say is, is f of x equal to this new negative f of negative x. Is this the same as the original one? Uh, no, I got a 3x squared up here and a negative 3x squared down here. So, no. Remember, that was to check if it was odd. So it's not even, it's not odd, therefore it has to be, in this case, neither. The only one left over. Okay. So that's how you do it algebraically. You're going to practice a few of those today. Have a good one.